Inklings. So this has been a director's spotlight that's been requested a few times and I was kind of putting off until I'd seen a few more of his films. There's still a couple I didn't see, uh, but this is Wes Craven. So I was absolutely distraught when I heard about the news of his death um, in 2016. Uh, I was, or 2015 I guess, I was working um, and I was on my phone on a break and then I saw the news uh, maybe an hour after it broke and I was very upset and depressed. Anyway, Wes Craven was born in 1939 in Cleveland. He was raised in a pretty normal Midwestern uh, upbringing and it seemed to influence several films of his and some of his teen screams and the attitude there. His first film, uh, Last House on the Left from 1972, is really brutal. Uh, it was co-produced with um, Sean Cunningham who went on to do Friday the 13th. But it's a really brutal film. I saw it once when I was a teenager and all I can think is, okay, I've seen it. Uh, let's never watch that again because everything about this is unpleasant. It is in the rape and revenge category and one of the better ones. Um, I don't necessarily regret watching it compared to some, but it is not something I feel comfortable watching again. It's not very forgiving. Um, I'm discounting all of his TV movies. Here too. So his next feature film is The Hills Have Eyes from 1977 about mutants in the desert. This one's pretty creepy exploitation-ish style, very popular for the 70s, um, and makes very good use of Michael Barrymore who is known as a horror vet now. Uh, his next film, kind of an odd one and not terribly easy to find on DVD, I can't even remember how in the hell I found this, is Deadly Blessing uh, with a very very early um, Sharon Stone film with this like weird uh, demon possession arc. I don't know, It's it seems very Giallo-esque. I don't know, it seems kind of European, European influence. It's definitely an odd one. Uh, his next one from 1982 is Swamp Thing based off of the comic. Um, I've seen it once and I don't remember it terribly clearly with uh, Adrian Barbu. It's very campy and kind of strange and has a bit of a comic booky feel uh, because I don't remember it very well. I can't give a solid review. Um, next one from 1984 is Hills of Eyes Part 2, which I haven't seen. Um, from what I remember, it was on Netflix for a long time. I don't know if it's still there. Um, I'll see it eventually. Uh, next one and one of my personal all-time favorite horror films is A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984, uh, which has a lot of like newbie actors in it, uh, such as um, Johnny Depp and uh, who her name is completely escaped me, Heather Langenkamp. Um, and this, I remember watching this movie when I was 16 and all I could think is that is genuinely scary. Even though I wasn't scared, I could appreciate that the concept was really, really good and definitely scary. Um, so Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my all time favorites. I have seen all of the sequels, only one of which was directed by him, many, many times as well. The first one is still superior to all the rest of them. Uh, next one, uh, which I have in this four movie pack, is The Serpent and the Rainbow with Bill Pullman, which deals with Haitian voodoo practices and zombies, and it's definitely a very strange, trippy idea, and it goes back to like old school zombie, not Romero zombie, so it's definitely kind of a fun one that I do suggest people watch. Uh, after that is Shocker from 1989. This one was kind of middling, I don't know, it was not really all that great. Um, a guy goes to the electric chair and starts haunting people. I, I didn't find it terribly memorable, it wasn't one of his better ones. Um, people Under the Stairs from 1991 is a lot of fun though, and I am kind of sad I don't have a DVD copy of it because it is pretty damn good. The creepy uh, mother-father couple, I remember them especially from Twin Peaks playing um, husband and wife on that as well. This is one of those twisting, turning, confusing kind of ones where you think it might be supernatural and then it's not and it's a lot of fun. Afterwards is uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare from 1994, which I do really like. I have a total weakness for meta films anyway. And Heather Langenkamp comes back playing herself and looking back at the Nancy Thompson role and all this stuff and it's definitely kind of a fun one. It's not that it's brilliant, but it's definitely very entertaining. Uh, next one is Vampire in Brooklyn from 1995. Um, the best part about it is that Angela Bassett looks amazing, but otherwise it's just sort of a kind of hokey, cheesy mess. I don't know, Eddie Murphy as a serious vampire with a bad accent is a little bit questionable. I don't, 
I don't say I don't recommend it, but it's not one of his better features. After that, uh, written by Kevin Williamson, is Scream, which became the um, self-referential humor, metacultural, fucking whatever, uh, blueprint for a lot of horror films with, at the tail end of the 90s. Um, this is classic. I love it. I've seen it many, many times. Uh, I think the sequel is definitely a very solid one from in 1997. And this is one of the better sequels that I've seen, especially considering what the first one is. The fact that they pulled it off so well is definitely impressive. Um, after that is Music of the Heart from 1999, which I know nothing about, and I'm assuming is not a horror film, and I didn't even know that he directed until I was looking up this list. So I can't tell you anything about it. After that, Scream 3, which I think is the worst out of the series. It's just sort of whatever. Um, because it's sort of whatever, I've only seen it once and don't remember it all that clearly, so I can't give a good review. After that is the film that could have been great and then wasn't, which is Cursed, which suffered from a lot of uh, studio interference. I, I kind of scream written werewolf film. It's supposed to have that same sort of edge with Jesse Eisenberg and uh, Christina Ricci. This is kind of a mess. I still really like it and get a kick out of it, but it's definitely not as good as it could have been, which sucks. Um, after that is Red Eye from 2005 uh, as well. I didn't see that. I remember all the trailers and stuff when it came out, but I never got around to seeing it. Um, he was one of the directors that, who did Paris um, to Me, which I can't speak French, but Paris with Love or something. From 2006, uh, his segment was a lot of fun, and it was probably my favorite in the whole one where it takes place in the cemetery near Oscar Wilde's grave. Uh, after that, My Soul to Take from 2010 was probably the only film of his I have been wholly disappointed in hated it and just was depressed that it was so bad. So that's the only one on here I completely don't recommend at all. And then there's Scream 4, which was his last directorial feature from 2011, which I admittedly haven't watched since I saw it in the theater when I was 17. But um, I did think it was better than Scream 3. And it had a lot of new little twists to adjust to the times and all that. But I really appreciated a lot of his style and a lot of the themes and a lot of the unique ideas that were put into his films that I hadn't really seen from other directors of his generation. Uh, Wes is dearly missed and I think that he did amazing things and from my understanding was a really cool person um, and I do recommend his films to any horror aficionado. Till next time Darklings!